All right, my fellow peace and peep heads, I'm back at the reviewing station to bring you another exciting spotlight review with none other than Transformer Studio Series Wave 2 Forager Class Decepticon Brawl, a long anticipated figure that I've been waiting so impatiently to review here for your viewing pleasure. Now I can finally do so. But before we take a look at this guy, Come inside for a moment, as you guessed it, we must first take a look at the packaging as per take of every single video review on this channel. Here it is. Let's get to it. We've got the nice artwork of Brawl looking very menacing here, showing off his claws. Very nice. I like that. Number 12 of the studio series, Decepticon logo, Decepticon Brawl, trademark by the way. Agents 8 and Plus, there's the Hasbro's logo, there's the Cartomi's logo, which to remind you, they are dual branding. From Transformers, the very first movie back in 2007, not the original cartoon movie which came back in the 80s. Anyway, Transformers, Misaligned Generations logo at the top right corner on this side here. We got that very nice artwork of Decepticon Brawl yet again. Looks pretty cool. I love that. Up above that, we have this open window container here, which would showcase the Autobot logo on the Decepticon's backdrop. Still haven't fixed that yet, Hasbro. And Takara, you're at fault too. Anyway, we have the authentic Transformer stab down below to remind you, if it doesn't say authentic, it's a knockoff on this side here. And once again, that very nice artwork as close up as personal as you can possibly get here. A brawl, very cool. It says Studio Series up there, number 12. On the back here, we got some brief information, which I must raise the camera so you can see here. Pertaining to the figure, with removing the glare here, now you can see all of it. If you want to read any of this information whatsoever, go ahead and pause the viewer. That's your choice. And so here we have Brawl once again on camera, and he looks really good. I like the way this figure actually turned out in his tank mode. With that said, let's do some side-by-side -side comparisons so we can get started here. So here's Bumblebee from the Studio Series. And as you can see, you know, it's not the strongest suit when it comes to comparing the tank to the car. It's definitely not in scale. What really counts is the robot mode. That's what Hasbro and Takartomi have intended throughout this series. You know, you may get lucky sometimes with some vehicles being a pretty good size compared to other vehicles in this line. But when it really comes down to it, the scale in comparisons is really it, it's as perfect as it can get for a toy being in their robot mode. And we'll get to that very shortly, but anyway, here's your size comparisons for vehicle form, if you want to call it that. More like a weaponized vehicle, which is what a tank pretty much is. It's a mobile unit that's loaded with heat. I mean, look at this. He's got a cannon here, he's got turret here, he's got those missile firing rocket launcher things there. He's also got his personal weapons of choice for robot mode, which are attached here, which you can remove if you want. Very tight on my figure, so I'm going to have to hold this down as I go about removing this. Might take a little bit of forcing here. I need to throw maybe a little bit of some shock oil in that hole. Anyway, I got one. There's the other one. Let's take a good look at these real quickly. So I say I did so. Very nice. Very nice silver here for this and this. It's a very, very cool weapon. Uh, there's a little bit of movement here to the claws, but they really don't go anywhere. They don't like, you know, they can't go any further back, so they can't be put away. They don't go anywhere beyond this going down, so it's kind of pointless that they even move at all. Anyway, there is something that is removable. This here. The Gatling gun can uh, be removed. I guess we can just plop it in the uh, placement of where I had the other weapons, and if you want to do that, you can. Why is that hole there? Anyway, I guess it don't matter. Let's uh, just go ahead and put this back on here. So we don't lose it. Alright, so we're five minutes into the video. Let's go ahead and get to the features of the tank. Not much that can really happen here. It's pretty much a brick. I mean, you do have your wheels at the bottom, which make up to the fact that this doesn't have any actual working treads. I mean, why would it at this scale? But it does roll pretty good. Doesn't seem to be much hindrance whatsoever. So that's pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, the cannon does not rotate due to the way that this was engineered. It's to be expected. But at least the turret at the top can rotate. 
I'm not so sure if it can go a complete 360. I haven't tried. As you can see, it's actually scraping this section here, so you don't want to risk it, but it can be done if you want. And also, you got a little bit of some articulation with the rocket launchers because uh, they're on ball joints, very loose ball joints, might I add. So if these do come off during transformation, you'll understand why. Uh, you also have your... Um, Cow catchers, I think that's what they're called. They can actually move up and down. They're on ball joints as well. Do transformation and all that. Uh, nothing that can really be done about this at all. I mean, you can try and press it down, but it's just going to keep popping back up because that's the way it's designed. So, just believe me there. I've seen this throughout a lot of other reviewers on YouTube. Same problem. Not really a problem because this is the way it's actually engineered. So now you know, in case you didn't. I've only know. done this a couple of times, and so you're just going to have to bear with me if I stutter a little bit and try to figure out how this went and that went. Because it's a little bit complex, to be honest here. But you pretty much want to start here by separating this section pretty much from the front here. Pull this out. And go ahead and flip these down like so. There we go. There we have that right come back here and what you want to do is separate his legs obvious legs like so there we have that this tab here is going to go uh, down right and then we're going to flip out his feet like so there we have that and then this whole section is going to come down and there's this tab right here that's going to go into this slot right here if you get it lined up just right, that is. And there's one. Go ahead and do the same thing on this side, like so. What we're going to do next is we're going to pop up the turn here on this double hinge, like so. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to take this whole section here, the whole section of the cannon part, and we're going to pop this up like so. If we have enough clearance, which this is the part that always seems to get to me here. First, we need to pull this down because it's on one of those slider pegs. You can't just actually push it in and click it into place. You have to slide it in. Otherwise, you might break it if you try to detach it the other way. So anyway, now that we got that out of the way now, what we can do is bring these out a little bit so we can take this panel here and flip it back. It does have a tab that's going to go into a slot, just like so. Same thing on this side, bring it out a little bit. Go ahead and take care of that. Now that that's taken care of, what we're going to do on this hinge here is we're going to flip it forward, like so, and do the same on this side right here, just like that. Rotate these, like so. Now we should be able to get in here. What we want to do is try this open easier said than done but again i've only transformed this guy a few times maybe i should have done it a little bit more but then again that would be my whole weekend these panels here are just gonna pop out like that and then you're gonna flip up this whole section here which allows his head to come out now next thing to do is to leave it like this because what we're gonna do next is once i get these cow catchers back in place i'm gonna take this whole section right here and we're going to bring it in as we get enough clearance. It should come right in there like so. And then what we can do next is bring down... No, actually not. I did this early. My bad. You want to push those back in so you can get his head to come back up. As you go about bringing the cow catchers like so, bring them down. And then you should have enough clearance to bring out these sections here and that's going to come right up and click into place like so. Bring down his legs so they're just out of the way now. I'm going to have to raise the camera just a little bit because he's getting a little big here. Anyway, now that that's taken care of, these sections right here, this is where I'm pointing at. You're supposed to flip them up. This is supposed to keep all this locked into place here so it doesn't move anymore. Bring down the cow catchers because this whole section right here... If I'm not mistaken, it's going to rotate right, and we need enough clearance as we can get here. So, like so. There we go. Well, that was a lot easier than last time. Okay, now that that's taken care of, what we're going to do next is we're going to take this tab right here. It's going to go into this slot right here. It's going to complete his shoulders 
As long as everything is in place just right. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. There we have that. Repeat the same thing on this side here. Push it in. Push it in. Push it in. So, anyway. Now that we got that. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate right here at the turret. And then there's a tab. It's going to go into that slot right there. As we go about pushing this down here on this double hinge. That's going to tab in right there as well. Just like that. Then we're going to flip this up, which is usually going to take these rocket launchers with it off the ball joint because these are very tight connections, but you're supposed to bring it up like that and then rotate to the front. The rocket launcher, do the same on this side here. Get to untab without taking the launcher. Flip it up, rotate to the front supposed to rotate his legs as well this one's pretty tight on my figure your results will be different so you might want to be a little cautious there and here we have Decepticon Brawl which looks very cool and pretty much as movie accurate as it can get for a Voyager size action figure and he is a pretty good size Voyager class figure for good comparisons let's bring in another deluxe figure so here's Decepticon Stinger as you can see, pretty good size between these two. And for another comparison, so let's bring in Voyager Optimus Prime here. And yep, this is pretty much as accurate as they come. Like I said, it's not about the vehicle modes, it's about the robot modes. That's what was intended from Takar Tomy and Hasbro working on this series. Remove all this here. And I'm going to bring in the set of instructions here, which I forgot to show off anyway. Yeah, there you go. There's your set of instructions. Now I can say I did so. Okay, so now here are his weapons. And pretty much what you want to do is just attach them like so from these holes here. Just like that. And take this one here. And on this side, slide it in like so. And now he's pretty much armed and ready to destroy... Anyone that gets in his way from Autobots to humans to, I don't know, Sergeant Epps maybe. Alright, so anyway, let's go through some of the details on this guy. He looks very accurate and look at that. Look at those teeth showing. I never even knew this guy actually had a mouth in all honesty. From all the uh, model renderings of the this uh, character to even the action figures of the past especially the leader class he always looked like he was wearing a mask but that's not the case and they did some really nice job getting the eyes painted underneath all that the eyelids I, I can't believe that they're actually capable of painting the inside there with very little clearance at all that that's really nice a detail on this is really spiffy i mean what else can i really uh, say yeah some people do complain that you know it would have been nice that if this uh this cannon piece could actually slide in or something be stored away a lot more cleaner than just sticking out from the back like this which looks kind of awkward but to me i'm fine with it it doesn't really bother me the only thing that really bothers me about this figure minus the complexity of this transformation it's just the rocket launchers here they're just so loose on the figure, it's just, I'm just waiting for them to pop off when I go about messing with him. Anyway, let's do it. Let's get to the articulation now. That's what you want to see. He does have a ball-jointed head, though, due to the way that his head is designed, you're not going to get much in the terms of movement. You get your left and right, you do get a little bit of some forward and back, but that's it. That is all you're going to get. Just that very little bit. Right. So we do have a hinge joint at the shoulder. We do have bicep swivel. We also have this inward and outward movement here to make up with the fact that he is kind of limited at the arms with the way you pose him. Like, if you want him firing off his uh, missiles here or something, not very easy to do because of the way that his arms are engineered. But it's due to the way that this figure was constructed in the first place. I mean, what are you going to do about it? It is what it is. The fact that they can work out something here is quite amazing, especially with what they have to deal with. Anyway, you do have single-jointed elbows. It does get 90 degrees of bends. That's all you can really ask for there. Uh, nothing at the waist due to transformation, but you do have your leg movement with this much kicking forward and this much going back. 
And if I'm not mistaken as well, you do get your full on JCVD split there. So there's your still quality. People enjoy it. You have by swivel joint, which this one again is pretty tight on my figure. I might have to put some shock oil in there. I do get single jointed knees that does get a little under 90 degrees just because all this is hitting the back section here. If this wasn't here, I'm sure you get a full 90 degrees. Anyway, you do have. No, you don't. You don't actually, unless you untab this here. Due to transformation, you do have a hinge joint for up and down movement at the feet, but only if you untab it. But if you do that, it's so loose it becomes unstable and the figure will fall over. So, might I advise you just keep that in place. No ankle rocker pivot. That's a little bit of a drawback. Like I said, the articulation could have been better on this guy, but in regards to everything else, it pretty much gives me everything that I want without much complaining at all. Now that that's all taken care of, what do you say we put him aside now and take a look at the last thing this figure has to offer? And that is his backdrop, which is none other than the Mission City battle that we pretty much got with Ratchet. So it's not much different at all. Not much except for the number here. And that's really it. That's how you know that, hey, this belongs to the Brawl and no one else of this line. So let's test the guy on it and see how he looks. Not too bad. As you can see, very sturdy cardboard. There might be a little bit of some crease lines that you're seeing here, but that's to be expected. I'm not expecting perfection out of this whole line, especially when I have to go about ordering these things online. I don't get to see them at retail stores, so I can't make the decision on which one I want to pick up, which one looks better than the other. It's to be expected. It is what it is, and I'm fine with that. Regardless, I'm still loving the Studio Series, and I cannot wait for more to turn up here and... It shouldn't be that much longer. Anyway, that's going to do it. Questions or comments, you know what to do. Hit it down below in the comment section of the video. If you like today's video review, hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to give me a sub up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Don't forget to throw in the towel. Until then, this is the Unprofessional Toy Reviewer, Reddit's Power, signing off saying thank you very much for watching this, and I will see you whenever you see me.